Are you a fan of reading? <laughs> Me neither. Luckily, now books come in convenient talking picture form, and today we'll pit two of the greatest novel to movie franchises ever against each other. It's a battle for the winningest wizarding world in the world as Harry Potter and his Hogwarts gang take on the Middle Earth alumni from Lord of the Rings. Scared Potter. You wish. We're lining up the entire franchises on the battlefield here, and that includes the prequels, who I usually make sit at the kids' table. Not today. Here's how we'll determine a winner. Round one, box office. Round two, tomato meter slash audience score. Round three, characters. And then I'll do a wild card round before I unleash the verdict rendering to all you muggles out there. Spells will be cast, names will be mispronounced, and dwarves will probably run out of breath. What about breakfast? We've already had it. We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? Round one, box office. I know seven magic rings aren't cheap, and I'm sure tuition at Hogwarts might involve some serious student loan debt, but I'm pretty sure the worldwide box office tally of either of these franchises could cover the bill. You ready to hear about a ton of bread? How about $12.2 billion? That's the total worldwide haul brought in by the 10 films in the Harry Potter franchise. Eight movies plus the two Fantastic Beasts movies. Because the Lord of the Rings films tapped out at six, we're not expecting them to compete with 12 bill, but they still raked in $7.88 billion across the globe, making for a better per film average than Harry. If we just take the classic Lord of the Rings trilogy versus the proper Harry Potter catalog, as in dude actually shows up in the movies, Team Hobbit edges out Team Gryffindor with a worldwide per film average of $1.56 billion to $1.33 billion. I'd take either amount of money. Those average numbers intensify when we look at the prequels each franchise spawned. Fantastic Beasts, those movies boast a worldwide per film average of $550 million, while the three Hobbit flicks can brag about averaging $1 billion per movie. Yes, you heard it here first. All six Lord of the Rings films have grossed at least $1 billion over the world, adjusted for inflation. So just imagine how much money those flicks made in Middle Earth. Is that like a documentary for them? Are Peter Jackson's movies like the last dance of Middle Earth? It's amazing how popular and bank-friendly the Lord of the Rings films have been since The Fellowship of the Ring kicked us off way back in 2001. But also launching a film franchise in 2001 was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And since then, J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World has made nine more movies, all of which can at least be considered smash hit blockbusters. And um, bloody hell! And despite the fact that I fall asleep within 10 minutes of each one of those Fantastic Beast movies, that prequel franchise is still looking to make more movies. And yes, I know Amazon paid a reported $250 million to get into J.R.R. Tolkien's world with new streaming adventures, but if we're just going on box office, I'm leaning towards Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, what's that? Who sold more books? Okay, let's make that the deciding factor in the box office. Reading? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you could read. Harry Potter has sold 500 million books. And despite a decades-long head start, the Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit novels have sold a mere 250 million books. It's not often a worldwide total of almost $8 billion loses you around in the box office, but Lord of the Rings ran into a boy wizard buzzsaw. Harry Potter takes round one. Well done. Round two, tomato meter slash audience score. It's clear fans love both of these celebrated franchises, and that claim is further ratified by the Rotten Tomatoes audience score. The Lord of the Rings entire franchise has a fresh average of 86%, and that's all the more impressive considering the original trilogy averages 92%. Meanwhile, Harry Potter is no slouch, averaging 79% for the entire Wizarding World and 82% for his eight-movie set. Brilliant. Prequel fight. The Hobbit movies averaged 71% to Fantastic Beasts, 67%. And again, maybe I would have liked those movies more if I wasn't asleep. Seriously, does Newt Scamander cast a spell called melatonin? Yes, I'm primarily upset with The Crimes of Grindelwald, which happens to be the lowest rated film of either franchise at a rotten 
The Battle of the Five Armies has the dubious honor of being the lowest rated Tolkien movie, albeit still fresh, at 74%. So it would appear Lord of the Rings has the advantage, but let's take a look at what critics had to say. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. Yep, they like the movies too. And while Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows 2 can buy the next round as the overall highest rated film in either franchise at 96%, the next three films on that list are the classic Lord of the Rings trilogy films. Two Towers is at 95%, Return of the King is at 93%, and Fellowship clocks in at 91%. Overall, Team Tolkien's tomato meter average is 79.3% compared to 78.4% for Team Rowling. Just like the box office round, it's tough to call either one of these franchises a loser in terms of the tomato meter, but a round can only have one winner, and this is the time when Gandalf tells Harry, take it, Jason Siegel. You shall not pass! Lord of the Rings wins the round, and we're tied at one. We're about to no one. Round three, heroes and villains. Sure, I could have made this category something vague, like characters. I usually do. But we all know what these two mythologies hinge on. Great heroes and imposing villains. Now, both stories put front and center protagonists who may be reluctant to reach their full potential. I can't do this, Sam. I am the chosen one. Harry Potter is a boy wizard, and besides saving the world, he has to grow up and find his place in said world. Meanwhile, Frodo and Bilbo Baggins both might rather spend their days in the Shire, occasionally having too many hard ciders at the pub. But fate had other plans, not to mention other characters. Lord of the Rings gives us more hobbits, such as Sam, Merry, and Pippin, plus a powerful wizard in Gandalf, a wise elf in Galadriel, and of course, a follically blessed king in Aragorn. Let me also give a nod to Legolas, Theoden, Elrond. There's a bunch, and if you're from Middle-earth and I didn't mention you, I have time constraints. But it also goes to show a point. These adventures, unexpected though they may have been, are all about the team. The films utilize their lengthy run times to highlight some individual accomplishments, but it's all in the name of unity. Look at all the different species putting aside their differences, coming together and battling to defeat the armies of Sauron. Remember that dude's eye? I see. Ugh, so creepy. We also had to deal with Witch King, Wormtongue, and Denethor, who you never want to be stuck behind at Golden Corral. And then you have Saruman, who is pulling double duty, battling both Gandalf and Yoda at the same time. But if you like yourself some villains, prepare ye for the foes Harry Potter and the Sweathogs had to face. Voldemort was so menacingly evil you couldn't even say his name. Voldemort? Don't use that name. We also had evil authority figures like Bellatrix Lestrange and Lucius Malfoy, or how about his kid, Draco? Bad apple from a bad seed. Oh, my father would hear about this! In addition to our big three heroes of Harry, Hermione, and Ron, we also got memorable boosts from Professors Snape and McGonagall, and also Hagrid. I'll give Newt Scamander and his prequel friends a shout out here because, look, they're trying, but I'm hard pressed to come up with a real quality contributor to keeping me awake during those fantastic beasts, but oh, Dumbledore. Yeah, old, young, I'll take D-door all I can get. And fans have long debated who would win in a wizard off between Aldous and Gandalf. Hardcore Potterheads want to will their guy to victory, but it's hard to imagine Gandalf not being able to lock him down. You shall not pass! There's so much danger at every turn in Middle-earth. Our hero's quest sees them dealing with orcs, spiders, race, goblins, trolls, mountains, walking vast distances. Where were you, eagles, balrogs, and creepy creatures with split personalities? You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. Not listening. Not listening. The X Factor here goes to Gollum, or as his high school friends call him, Smeagol. He's one of the most memorable characters in either franchises, and Andy Serkis' performance capture revolution put an indelible mark on Lord of the Rings about the great duality of the human psyche. Is he a human? I don't know. Who cares? If Baggins loses, we eat it whole. Fair enough. However, I think the swaying factor in this round goes to Harry, Ron, and Hermione somehow managing to stay friends, and maybe more than that, 
while battling giant snakes, death eaters, Voldemort, jerky witches, whomping willows, werewolves, spiders, and trolls. They have a cave troll. Okay, so Middle Earth had Death Eaters too, but the Harry Potter Big Three, they had to deal with them while also going through puberty. Don't you hate when you conquer a Whomping Willow only to have a huge zit on your nose the night before prom? In one of the toughest rounds of all time in the history of Versus, I'm gonna award Harry Potter and his gang the win in round number three. Gryffindor wins! Wild card round, most iconic. We're looking for the most iconic of the bunch, and to do that, let's start with some of each franchise's most memorable moments. With Harry Potter, just remember seeing these gorgeous sets for the first time on the big screen. Hogwarts, the Chamber of Secrets, Platform 9 and 3 quarters, they all showcase the imagination of J.K. Rowling while immersing us further into this war. Welcome, Harry, to Diagon Alley. It's an accomplishment just getting us into the theater so many times for one franchise, and it's all the more impressive that the final climactic clash between good and evil lived up to the hype. Even though I maintain Voldemort did not have his A game that day, you gotta give props to Harry, Hermione, and Ron for coming together one last time when it mattered most. Let's finish this the way we started. With Lord of the Rings, I love thinking about the contrast from one set to the next. The Shire looks like such a relaxing, hippie village, and I think Woodstock could have been an annual summer tradition there. Juxtapose that with the volcanic intensity of Mordor, and then remind yourself that our brave little soul trying to take the ring there is from that late 60s Beatles commune place, the Shire. Crazy. One does not simply walk into Mordor. There's also epic battle scenes that rank up there with some of the best action sequences ever put to film. The Battle of the Five Armies is impressive in sheer scope, but I'm talking about the intimate hand-to-hand -hand combat, or in Legolas's case, the hand-to-arrow-to-face combat. I love that shot of him in the rain, sliding on the stairs, knocking down baddies like he's Ray Allen draining corner threes. Damn it, I went sports again? I'm, I'm so sorry, y'all. You're hopeless. And in perhaps the most surprising legacy left by Harry Potter, Quidditch is an actual sport played all over the world. Seriously. It's replaced frisbee golf as the go-to college kid sport of our time. Lord of the Rings can't match Harry Potter in terms of intramural athletic accomplishments, so it'll have to be content with its incredible run at the Oscars. Return of the King won every award category in which it was nominated, making it a perfect 11 for 11, including Best Picture and Best Director. Only two other films ever have won 11 Oscars. Can you name them? Oh wait, it's Titanic and Ben-Hur. Don't you let go. So lots of folks think Andy Serkis should have been recognized for his work as Gollum, but he'll have to be happy with that character helping the movies take a Jurassic leap forward in terms of visual effects. Plus, everyone has tried a Gollum impression at a party. Usually doesn't go well. No, I'm not going to try it. Both franchises had their inaugural films released in 2001, as Stanley Kubrick foretold, and while both have promising futures with prequels, Broadway shows, and streaming seasons in the works, it is the opinion of this court that Lord of the Rings is a hair more iconic. A thin, wispy hair, like one of the ones on Gollum's comb-over. It is a precious win indeed, because now we're tied at two rounds apiece. A day may come when the courage of men fails. When we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day! This day we fight! So once again, it's up to me to step up to the plate and render a verdict that will be scrutinized for all time. What? In perhaps the bloodiest battle yet, I'm giving this win to Lord of the Rings. It's done. Maybe it's because the source material came out first, or I saw all those movies multiple times in theaters, but it's no shame to Harry Potter. Harry doesn't care about me. He's in New York and he's got that cursed child to worry about. The show is always sold out. Ready? Ready. All any of us care about is what you, the viewer, has to say. So comment below and type in your vote. Are you going L-O-T-R or H-P? Together, those letters spell FLORT. So as long as your answer makes more sense than that, we're good. This is completely mental. 
completely. Keep it classy out there on the interweb. I'd love to stay and chat more, but I booked an eagle to come whisk me home. And it'll be here now any second. Whenever on time. Oh wait, I'm already home. Cancel the eagle.